We're gonna jump in Cubase Pro 11 today and I'm gonna answer the following question that I received more than once. What is the difference between a VCA fader and a group channel? Hey, what's going on? The Chris Lim here from Mixdown Online. Now, if you want to improve your mixing workflow, I have a free gift for you. It's a free workshop on how to create the perfect mix template. In this video, I share with you my whole process on how I built my own mix template. And if you're a Cubase user, I'm also including a free Cubase session that you can base yourself on to create your own mix template. And even if you're not using Cubase, you can apply everything that I teach in your own DAW. So check it out. The link is down below. Okay, now let's jump in Cubase and talk about the difference between a VCA fader and a group channel. So let's start with a group channel. I have a drum recording um, and uh, if I am create myself a group channel, very simple, I'm going to click on top uh, right here on the plus sign, add track, and I'm going to go and look for a group. I'm going to make this one a stereo and the folder setup is going to go outside the folder, doesn't matter. Uh, and I'm going to call this one drums, okay, because I'm going to route all the drums channels into this group. So the group is going to sum up all the channels I'm going to route into it. Uh, so for example, if I take all these channels and I'm going to make sure that Q-Link is active, if I go into the routing tab, now if you don't see the routing tab, click on racks on top and make sure routing is checked on. And I'm going to select the output of those selected tracks and I'm gonna route those to my group drums that I just created. Now, all of those tracks are going straight into this channel. So this is the group channel for all of my drum channels. And this is good if you wanna sum up some channels together uh, and you wanna add effects on the full group, uh, this is what you can do. You can actually uh, just create yourself a group channel track. From this point on, you can add all the effects uh, that you want and you can even send the signal to some you know, effects like reverbs, delays, and you know, stuff like that. Uh, so this is basically what a group channel is and what it you know does. So if you want to bring down the volume of all those channels, you just need to bring down the drum group channel, you know, and so on. Um, now I'm going to show you a faster way to create the same channel. Okay, so I'm just going to re remove this one, and I'm going to select again all of my channels. And this time from the mixer, I'm going to right click and I'm going to select Add Group Channel to Selected Channel. So this is going to save you one step. So same for configuration. I'm going to keep this one to stereo and name this one drum group there you go click on add track and now automatically all of my selected channels are going to be routed to this uh, drum group so this is basically how you create a group channel track if you want to just uh, group some tracks together to process them together and to have more control on all those channels all together now when it comes to the vca this one stands for voltage controlled amplifier and what this is going to do it's close to what the group channel does it's going to group channels together however it will not sum up these channels okay so the output of those selected channels going to the VCA fader will not change. Okay? It's not a routing uh, thing going on here. Okay? It will only control the faders by maintaining the relative level of those faders. So let me show you. I'm going to create in Cubase a VCA fader. So I'm going to click on the add track on top, click on VCA, and I'm going to name this one VCA drums. All right. I'm going to click on add track. And there you go. I have my VCA channel right here at the bottom. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I can actually go on the mix console and I'm going to have to, uh, to link them to that VCA fader manually. Again, like we did with the group channel, there's a faster way to create a VCA fader. And it's pretty much the same as we did with the group channel. I'm gonna select all of my channels and from the mix console, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click on add VCA fader to selected channels. Now you can also do the same with an effects channel, by the way, and those commands uh, can be customized as a key command if you want to, okay? You just need to go into key commands and look for those commands. And like I did, you can assign a keyboard shortcut to those commands. So I'm going to click on add VCA fader to selected channels and it's going to create everything for you in a very fast way. So all of these selected channels are linked to this VCA channel. As you can see on top of these channels, we have link one that is the group link. 
That is the same uh, as uh, the VCA Link 1 channel. And I'm actually going to rename this one to VCA Drum. There you go. And if you want to change the name of that, you can. Uh, you just need to click on the E uh, icon on top, just beside the link, and you'll have your link group settings. And from this point, uh, you just uh, uh, click on link one, and we can just call this one link drums. And there you go. Okay, so now if I bring down that fader, it's going to bring down all the other faders, you know, in a relative way. Okay, so this is actually very cool. Now, opposed to a group channel, you cannot insert any plugins. It's not a routing thing. You know, all those tracks are still routed to the stereo output, but its main purpose is only to control the faders of those linked channels. That's it. Now, if you want to remove a channel out of the VCA, you just need to click on uh, the channel link group on top and uh, click on included in link group and click on none. And it's going to ask you, in my case, uh, OHR, which is the name of the channel, will be removed from the link group uh, with VCA fader. Do you want to keep the combined automation? I don't have any automation, so I'm going to click on no. And now, as you can see, that channel is out of the VCA group. And same if you want to add a channel to that same group, let's say I want to add that reverb channel, that effects channel, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go right on top on the link settings and I'm going to click on include link group and I'm going to select my link drums, which is my link group that is controlled by the VCA channel. And there you go. Very simple. Now I'm going to load a full mixing session to show you how I use a group channel and how I use a VCA fader. Okay, now to know uh, when to use a group channel and when to use a VCA fader, uh, let's look at what I do on my side in a real mix uh, situation. So this is the mix console. I'm going to start by explaining to you when I use a group channel. The first easy example is on the right side where I have all of my instrument buses. So I have one group channel for my drums, one for the bass, one for uh, all the guitars, one for all the vocals, okay? So those are my main instrument buses. So that means that all of my drum related channels of my mix is routed straight into this stereo group channel. Same for the bass, all of my bass related channels are routed straight into uh, this stereo group channel and so on. Uh, so this way, if I need to bring down the full drum mix with the effects, this is how I route them. I can just add some automation like I did on this mix right here, uh, just to bring the level down for on the verses in this case and bring them up on choruses by just automating that one channel, uh, which is very, very easy and practical and fast uh, to do. Or if you just want to bring it down to fit better in the mix, you just bring that one channel down and that's it. And same for, uh, for the bass, you know. Now in this session, I have uh, two acoustic guitar channels that are playing the same guitar part, but doubled. So what I decided to do is to route them into this group channel, which is my acoustic stereo group channel. And this is where I add my processing to process those acoustic guitars. So I have my channel strip on top for a bit of EQ and the compression. And I also have the send level here that I am sending to this uh, reverb effects channel. So if I solo this channel by itself, this is what I'm going to get. So it's like controlling a regular audio channel. All the processing and send levels are managed basically from that channel. So very simple to uh, to understand. But if I was to process these two acoustic guitars individually, let's say, um, you know, they uh, they have their own EQ and also their own send levels. Let's say this one has more level than the other. So if I keep them routed in the same group channel track, this is what's going to happen. Now I lost the post reverb send relationship uh, between these channels. So that's why you're still hearing uh, the reverb when the level of the group channel 
is down, okay? So this is not what I want to do because, you know, I'm actually sending from these two channels uh, the signal to the reverb in post-fader mode. Now it sounds like it's in pre-fader mode, and this is not what I want. So now using a group for this purpose uh, will not be the uh, the best way to go. A VCA is going to work way better. Now, if you're a bit confused with uh, post, uh, post effects and relationship, I actually made a video talking about that specifically. I'm going to link it right on top. Okay, now I'm going to select these two channels and I'm going to create a VCA fader. I'm going to show you another way in Cubase you can create a VCA uh, fader. The first uh, uh, option we looked at was to right click on the selected channels and uh, click on add VCA, which is basically the fastest way to do it. But you can also uh, select your channels, click on link on top, and then make sure you just uh, click on use VCA fader and that will do the same. Okay, I'm going to click on OK. And now I have the VCA fader. Now, if I do the same thing, okay, I'm going to solo uh, these channels and we're going to do the same thing. But this time around, I'm going to bring down the VCA fader instead of the group channel. Okay, now I maintained the post level uh, relationship between the, the channels and the reverb. Okay, so and this is uh, what is cool about using a VCA fader. So all the channels that I want to group together, I want to control together like these two uh, base channels uh, that are processed separately, I am going to use a VCA channel. And again, I can mute, solo, listen, and control the fader level of these channels by keeping the relative level of these channels. Uh, I'm doing the same here for the drums. I have a VCA for the kick and the snare uh, because I'm actually controlling with the snare uh, the, uh, the actual snare recording and also the sample channels, which again are processed uh, separately. So this is when I'm going to use a VCA fader opposed to a group channel. And the cool thing is that you can automate also the VCA channel like I did here uh, with the bass. Uh, so I can uh, add some volume automation, uh, mute automation, a solo automation if I want to, uh, straight from the VCA channel itself. And on top of that, I can also add some automation on these individual uh, channels that are controlled by the VCA. And these levels can also be, uh, be changed individually. So these two channels that are linked to this VCA channel are not linked together, okay? They only are controlled by the VCA and that's it. So I can actually control uh, these uh, channel levels separately. They are not linked together, but they are controlled by the VCA. Now, if you're not using Cubase Pro or you don't have access to a VCA channel in your DAW, uh, you can use a NOx channel or a group channel, uh, but you'll have to route also the effects channel that you are using uh, with the uh, all the other channels that you want to uh, add to your group, that you want to route to your group channel. Okay, so all of those channels needs to be routed into that same group channel. So this way, uh, everything is linked together like I have on my instrument channel. I hope that was helpful and wasn't too confusing because I realized that, you know, especially if you're a beginner in uh, in recording and mixing, these concepts uh, can be confusing at some point. So I hope I was able to clear everything up. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave everything down below. And until next time, take care and see you.